put that in the chat box right now. And at the end, I'll go ahead and announce. But the first person that can remember what our group was called before we changed it, then it's going to win. And I'm going to send them a little this a pen just like this one. So anyway, and then I, while we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to introduce Raina Mortensen. And she was married for 23 years. She's the mother of four and the executive director for Nexus Mortgage. Uh, she's responsible for the day-to-day -day operation. She has got a huge job working directly with the owners, company managers, and directors to ensure everything is running uh, efficiently and effectively. And I know the people that are on here from Nexus know that she does a great job. Uh, their motto is stepping forward together as one and one is W-O-N because they're all winners. And I thought that was really a very catchy little uh, tagline. And they're aiming to inspire and empower women to achieve more within the mortgage industry, which, you know, that's what we're all about. So Raina, take it away. So I timed myself. I'm hoping that I keep it within limits here. So if you need me to I'll figure it out, but hopefully I'm, I'm okay. So, um, so like Linda said, uh, married to my husband since 2001, we met and got married within three months. So from our first date to the day that we said I do, it's exactly three months. So we're 23 years almost and uh, four kids. And at one point we had four kids under the age of five. So we had a five-year-old, a three-year-old, a two-year-old and a newborn. So our life was a little bit crazy and sane, um, but over the last, like for the first 12 years of our marriage, I was a stay-at-home mom. I hung out at the house. I took care of the kids, watched my nephew, you know, all that fun stuff. And then uh, started doing some odd jobs to help things meet. So I've done my fair share of crazy things, um, including cleaning a milk plant at one point. And let me just say, I still can't drink Safeway milk. I just, I just can't. So, um, you know, things like that. And then um, I've been doing, I do custom cakes and those kinds of things to help with the bills and things. So in 2014, we moved from Nevada back to Arizona. We'd been in Nevada for about a year and a half. And at that time we moved in with my in-laws and it was decided that my husband was gonna go back to school and work on his engineering degree. And I was gonna go back to work full-time. And it would be the first time that I'd been full-time in the workforce in over 10 years. And I was a little bit nervous, but it was what we needed to do when the direction we needed to go in. So I went to work full-time at Sam's Club as a cashier. And then I was in that position for a few months. They found out that I did cake. They put me in the bakery. So we fast forward three years. I've been in the bakery for most of that time. I reached the top of my department. I was underappreciated. I was getting scolded and I can't think of the word, um, berated is a good word, um, for going 15 minutes over my time. I would have 40 hours and 15 minutes and those 15 minutes, man, I was in trouble for those. So, um, and it was very frustrating because I was there to do good work. I was there to make sure things got taken care of and be done. And if that meant it pushed me over a couple of minutes, then I was willing to stay those extra minutes to make sure that the project was finished but they didn't see it that way. They saw it as me costing them an extra 15 minutes on my clock. So the last raise that I got at Sam's Club before I left was 32 cents. And that was very telling for me. I'd been there for three years. I was running the department and I got a 32 cent raise. So when a friend recommended me to reach out to Mike and Matt about working with them, I took the opportunity had an interview with Mike and Matt, and I'm not going to lie, Mike scared me. I was a little bit scared, um, but I took the choice. I made the choice. I took the job for a couple of reasons. One, it was data entry. No problem. I could do that. But there was opportunity. I knew that there was opportunity, and it was set hours. It was a Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, and that meant I would be home on the weekends. And I would actually get to go to church with my family. And that was huge for me. It was huge. So I was willing to take a pay cut. And I honestly don't remember what that pay cut was. 
but I was willing to take that pay cut to go to work for my GMAT because I saw the opportunity that was there. Um, within about six weeks, the receptionist went to lunch and she didn't come back. So Mike says, hey, I can hire somebody else and you know we can do it that way or you can take on this extra role and I can give you a raise. I said, I'll take it. Give me, give it to me, I'll take it. Um, so a few months later, we opened Nexa. And I say we, because I was there, I was in the thick of it. I helped pick the name and I helped pick the logo and I picked the color, um, but we were all there. So we opened Nexa and we had four, five loan officers at the time and me. So super small, um, fast forward six years later, and we have over 2,300 loan officers and hundreds of support staff. And we've grown exponentially and we're not stopping. So we're, we're gonna go. But um, I was part of every department as we grew the company. Every department, as we had to open things, you know, we had to have someone working in accounting and doing payroll. And we had to have somebody who was doing compliance. And we had processing, and we all these things. So Mike would ask me to take on a new project or a new role and I would do it. So that's how we got to where we are now. Um, and as the executive director currently, we'll see where that goes. Um, but if you have questions about Nexa, I'm going to ask because I can answer them all for you. Um, but hopefully my Nexa Nation loves me. Um, but over the last 20 years, I have struggled with depression. And because of my personal experiences with depression and watching my mother struggle with it immensely throughout my entire childhood, I would say that I am hypervigilant when it comes to my emotions. I am usually 95% of the time aware when I start to struggle. And I am preemptive. I call the doctor, I go see my therapist or my psychologist, whichever one I think I might need. Um, and I address the issue, right? So for me, depression is not something that I hide and it's not something that I'm afraid to talk about. And most people would look at me and say, ah, she's a happy-go-lucky person and I am, but I still struggle and I'm very aware of that struggle. So, but I've noticed that since I started working for Mike and Matt over the years, I have changed how I look at things. I've changed how I react to situations. And I'm not claiming that I'm 100% always, that I always act accordingly, because, you know, I'm not. I, I'm absolutely 100% human. And I have my own challenges and I have my own faults, just like everyone else. But when a situation arises, I can usually keep my eye on the bigger picture. And I continue moving forward and finding my path. Um, one of the things that I always take into consideration and I want you guys to think about is, is this a fact or is it a thought? So my eyes are blue. That's a fact. Not everybody likes blue eyes. That's a thought. And how I react to that thought is completely up to me. So we can't control the way other people think or feel, but we are absolutely 100% in charge of how we feel and how we think about the things that are presented to us and the situations that we're in. So it's December. It's December. Everybody's working on gifts. So many holidays. So I want you to consider this for a second. You have someone you love and you want to give them the best gift. Oh no. Whoops, she froze. At the best yes, part, too. <laughs> You're waiting. You're waiting oh, for the answer. So oh, this is going to be an amazing gift once we get to open it. Right. <laughs> I want to call like her cliffhanger from oh, now on. Back. There you're she back. is. Hello. We're all waiting to hear the answer. <laughs> That's the gift. You, you put all this time and effort into this gift that you're going to give to this person who you love and care about. You give them the gift. They open it, 
Ah. And they move on. How do you start feeling about that gift? You put all this time and effort and energy into that gift and to them, it didn't matter, right? But let's flip it. Let's put it in reverse. Someone gives you a gift. You're holding that gift. My personal first thought is how amazing it is that that person thought of me. They thought to spend the time to give me that present. I don't really care what's in the box, right? So we have these low expectations when we are being given a gift, but when we are giving the gift, we put so much pressure on ourselves, right? And, I, and I'm using gift as an analogy, but the point is, why do we put so much pressure on ourselves? It's okay for us to receive a gift that we aren't absolutely thrilled with. We're okay with that. But we can't give someone else a gift that they're not going to absolute, absolutely love how we felt about that gift before they open it and then what they do with it. Didn't we put time and thought and effort into it? We did. And I think that's all that should really matter. It should, that should be enough. We can't dictate how they feel about the gift, but you can determine how you feel about it. Your part of that gift is done. It's no longer your responsibility. Don't let someone else's reactions or emotions dictate your reaction. Now, this applies to lots of other things, but I'm using gift because we're in December. But when we put forth the efforts, we need to allow ourselves some grace. So we just have to be proud of who we are, what we're doing, and the effort that we are giving. Okay, so that's enough. Some days you'll be able to give 110%, and other days you're going to max out at 75. And occasionally you're going to have a day where you've only got 5%. You've got 5%. That's it. You don't have any more. You have 5% to give. Those days are rough, but we all have them. We all have those days where we just have 5%. We don't have 100%, we've got five. But if you give 100% of that 5% that day, you're still 5% closer to where you wanna be. And that's enough because it happens. We all have bad days. We're not gonna be able to give 110% every single day. But if you're giving everything that you can give in that particular moment, that's enough. And that's really hard for us, I know. We, enough is never enough, okay? Um, so when I am faced with a stressful situation, nine times out of 10, nine times out of 10, I can adjust, I can pivot, and I can change so that I can continue to move forward. I look at my overall picture, make a choice, change what's required, and continue on my path. If you know what your final goal is, then your path is going to be easier to follow. It's going to be easier to see. As long as you keep that proper perspective and you're still headed in the right direction and you're giving that whole percent, whether that's 5, 50, 75, or 110%, you're giving that whole percent every day that you've got to give, you're that much closer to meeting that goal, to finding that, making that destination. So forward, we've already got, we've always got to be moving forward, right? Um, far too often we let ourselves get distracted and by when we get distracted, we find ourselves shifting and we're kind of going off path a little bit. And just that few degrees shift, your destination is straight ahead of you, but that shift, you're gonna end up way off course if you stay on that, right? So don't let those distractions be a decision. Like, this is not the way I'm going to go. Detour, come back, find your path. Readjust, realign, find where you need to be. Um, because most of these distractions are out of our control. They are things that we can dictate. And then we start to feel overwhelmed. 
And then because we feel overwhelmed, we slow down. And then we get bogged down. And then we feel stuck. And I freely admit that I feel this way about my house a lot. Um, I don't know what a 40 hour work week is. And so sometimes my house suffers, but that's okay. Um, it's hard to keep the work life completely balanced all the time, all the time, especially when you work from home, which a lot of us do. It takes effort. So there are some things that I have learned that I have to let go. They aren't worth my detour. They aren't worth my sanity and they aren't worth my happiness and my joy. My joy and my happiness and my sanity is more important than that little detour. I'm going to use a, a small thing. When we were first married, my husband and I, we've been married for over 22 and a half years. We're almost at our 23 year mark. It would drive me crazy when he would fold the towels. Who has a particular way that they fold their towels? Okay, so for me, in half, in half, in thirds. That's the way they fit in the cupboard. That's the way I like them to look. I like the neatness. I, that's the way the towel should be folded, right? Um, my husband and I don't fold towels the same way. Just not how he does it. We don't load the dishwasher the same way. We don't eat some of our foods the same way. Peanut butter and jelly is a great example of that. Everybody makes their peanut butter and jelly sandwich a little bit different. Rich, it's a super thin layer of peanut butter on one piece of bread and half a cup of jelly. Literally, it's diabetes in a sandwich. It's, it's insane. But even though, so we've been married for 22 years and if he folds towels, he still folds them his way and that's okay. I've learned that that's okay. It's not worth my time, my energy to go back and refold those towels for them just to get pulled out, used by a child and left on the bathroom floor. It's not worth the detour. I've learned to let it go. The dishes in the dishwasher don't usually come out clean, usually. And if they're not, I throw another tab in, close it back up and run them again. It's not worth my time. It's not worth the detour. Um, we don't have to have, we don't have to be perfect. The house doesn't have to be perfect as much as we would like it to be. It does not have to be. We don't have to make dinner every night. I love to cook. I love being in the kitchen. But that's what leftovers are for. Right? And once a week, we schedule an FFYS. Who knows what's FFF? Who knows what FFYS stands for? At our house, it's fend for yourself. That means you are in charge of your own dinner and it is on the schedule. Like Thursday night, FFYS. And my kids know exactly what that means. That means they either make something for themselves, they go out to eat, my teenagers all have jobs, so they can go buy their own dinner if they want to, or they eat leftovers. There's food in the house. They, I'm just not doing it for them. FFYS. And yourself is usually one word, but at our house, it's two for that one. You know, fin for your sale. Take care of it. They usually figure it out. Sometimes they share, which is even better. But the laundry isn't always going to be done. The bathroom isn't always going to be clean. If you have teenage sons or even little sons, you completely understand where I'm coming from. It's a whole other topic. But we put far too much pressure on ourselves. Will the dishes get done? Usually, but they can wait. They can wait. They're not going to go anywhere. I spend, my dishes can wait because if it's the opportunity to spend more time with my kids who are teenagers and they're not always home, I'm going to take that opportunity. I'm going to spend my time with my kids because they're going to help keep me where I want to be. Um, when I was in the thick of raising my, my tiny humans, I'm gonna show you a picture. Did it pop up? There it is. So when I was in the thick of raising my tiny humans, I would put so much pressure on myself. The house needed to be clean. Kids needed to be presentable. They couldn't be rag muffins as my mom used to call us when we were all disheveled. Um, I would reach a point of overwhelm, so much so that I wouldn't even know where to start. And then nothing would get done. 
if I'd known then what I know now, I would have told myself to pick one thing. You don't have to do everything. Just pick one thing and go from there. Um, these are my four. This is my daughter and my nephew. They're six weeks apart. And at three months old, I started taking care of him. So I had my four and my nephew. And so it was a little bit of a crazy household, but it was totally worth it, right? So my main goal back then should have been, are they all still breeding? Are they all still breeding? Is the house a mess? It doesn't matter. Are they all still breeding? Did they get fed? Right? I put way too much pressure on myself. And because of that pressure, I struggled a lot with depression and anxiety. And just my over, overall mental health was really rough back then. Um, does your family care if there are dishes in the sink? Mine doesn't. And if they do, they'll do them. I have a 16-year-old who's a little OCD. She comes home and she does the dishes. It's actually this one right here, the little one. Um, she's amazing. So yeah, and this, this just because it popped up in my memories and um, it's on earth for a few minutes. This is typical of our house. Christopher and Natalie, my second son and my second daughter are always fighting, always. So I bought them this sweater a couple of years ago and I still threaten them with it occasionally. I'm gonna put them both in it and make them hang out with each other and they still don't appreciate it, but I thought it was funny, so. Um, but life's hard. What's most important is that our family knows that we love them and they know why we're doing what we're doing. We work the way that we work because for most of us, we love our job. We love what we're doing. And our family needs to be able to know that and see that and, and recognize that when it comes from us. Um, our life, life is hard. It's hard for everyone. It's just hard for everyone in different ways. But it's a whole lot harder when you have the wrong perspective. I struggled a lot when my kids were little with that. But in the last few years, I found my path. I found where I'm supposed to be. I know what my perspective is and I know my path. And the mortgage industry and Nexa are my path. I've grown and I've changed a lot and they've evolved a lot over the last few years. And I've become the person I'm meant to be right now. I'm not the person I'm meant to be in a year but I'm the person I am meant to be right now. And I will continue to grow and change as long as I keep my eyes pointed in the right direction. I keep the proper perspective. I'm not finished. I'm still learning. I'm still growing. I still have to keep my eyes headed the right direction and continue on my path the way that I know I need to be. So I wanted to give you one quick example of keeping perspective. And if I'd realized it was gonna be this soon, I wouldn't have stopped sharing my screen. But this is my friend, Jay. He is a business owner. He's a volunteer firefighter, an EMT, a husband, and a father. But of all those things, his determination to not let his circumstance define his destination makes Jay stand above the rest. And I thought this was a perfect picture because he's towering over everyone else in this picture. And he would think that that joke was hilarious and y'all didn't even know it was a joke, but it's a joke um, because, let me show you the next picture. Jay is a double amputee. Now, let me remind you, he's a business owner, a volunteer firefighter and an EMT. He's done all of those things, being a double amputee. Um, he was born with club feet and as he grew, his legs couldn't keep up. So eventually he had to have them amputated. First one, and then a few legs later, later, years later, he had another one. His other one had been taken. This was done so that he could continue to walk. Perfect. There wasn't, it was done so that he could walk. He had to take that, he, and then it was his decision. But he had to make that choice so that he could continue to be the person he wanted to be because his legs were not allowing him to be that person. So we had to make that change in order to continue on that path. So I posted on Facebook about a week ago and asked how people keep their perspective. And his response 
I love him so much. His response, um, we've been friends for like 25 years, is so Jay, and it's so to the point. And his response is this, that's an easy one. I just take off my legs and it gives me a different perspective. Okay, and he, he is doing that jokingly, but I know he means it in both the literal and the psychological. It gives him a different perspective. He will literally drop from six foot four. That picture, he was six foot nine. He had on his go-go gadget legs, as he calls them. So he was six foot nine in that one, but he'll go from six foot four to six foot nine, depending on the pair of legs he's wearing. But when he takes his legs off and he's on his, he calls them stumps. When he's on his stumps, he's under five foot. Completely changes his perspective, right? But it also changes his perspective when he has his legs on. His legs allow him to do things and he made that choice to go that path. But he's never allowed his disability to be a disability. He could have easily taken a detour. He could have ended up on a completely different path, but somewhere along the line, he made the decision not to be distracted. We have to make that choice. We have to make the decision. I can tell you one thing for certainty when I'm gone, my kids won't remember if there were dishes in the sink, if the laundry was always folded. They'll remember, probably remember the big baskets of laundry, of clean laundry sitting at the foot of my bed because that's where they all end up. Um, they won't remember those things really. They will remember that I worked a lot because I loved my job. They will remember our next events because they're at most of them. But mostly my family will remember the good times. They'll remember my obsession with taking pictures. They just know I'm gonna take 600 pictures. I took 200 pictures of my girls on Saturday for winter formal. It, it, it is what it is. They just know, they know that. They'll remember the fun that we had, the laughter, the baking and all of the crazy food that I make because I am not afraid to try a new recipe. So we eat some interesting things. But my point being is it doesn't have to be work versus family. We don't have to choose one to excel at. We can excel at both. We just have to make the choice to excel. We can excel in our careers and in our personal lives if we keep the proper perspective, know where we're going, and we aren't afraid to get there. It can be scary, but we can't be afraid to get there. Um, just give yourself the permission. You can do it. It's a choice that you have to actually make every single day. In life, there is always going to be mountains and hills that we have to climb. And sometimes they're going to be a little bit heavier than others. But when they're heavier, they make us stronger. And then the next one that comes, we're that much closer. We're that much stronger. You're going to take some of those turns at 90 miles per hour. You're going to climb those hills. Sometimes those hills take a long time, but you'll get there. You've climbed your hills. You've climbed mountains already. I know you have. You all have. You've done it. You're still here. You reached the top of those mountains. You've traveled your own path. But often, there are times and sections in our past that intersect with someone else's and they run parallel. We don't always have to travel our path alone. There are so many amazing women and men in this industry that are willing to throw you a rope and help you to the top of that hill. We've all conquered our own mountains. We all have knowledge and power that we can share so that they can make it up that hill. Finding your purpose isn't something that you can do in a few days, a week, or even a few months sometimes. Sometimes it's a lifelong journey and you can only do it one step at a time. You have to take a step. Your purpose might change. I know mine's changed several times. Your purpose might change as you grow and as you change, so will your purpose. Occasionally, you need to just stop, pause, consider where you are, reflect on your path, and if that is that path taking you in the direction that you want to go. If it's not, change course. Sometimes the road to finding our purpose 
has a few curves, stoplights, forks, but the road is still there. And even if we get detoured, we can find our way back to our path, to our, our purpose, or we can find that new purpose. Because sometimes those detours take us to where we're supposed to be. But as long as we are keeping our perspective forward and looking to the future, we're going to be headed in the right direction. You can't change the past, but you can change how you react to the future. How many of us have super negative people in our lives? And how many of us have super positive people? Just think about it for a quick second. Which one would you rather be with? Would you rather be with that person who is always encouraging, uplifting, and helping? Or would you rather be with that person who always sees the glass as half empty? Half empty. So be that person who's always helping and uplifting because by helping and uplifting other people, you're helping yourself. By being that person, you're giving yourself what you need too. It's, it's a give and take and it's amazing when you do it. Your desires are your roadmap to your best life. Right? Follow your passion. And I'm willing to bet that every single one of you know what that passion is. And some of you just might be a little bit afraid. But follow your passion. It'll lead you to where you're supposed to be. So I hope that I brought some insight and some information for you guys. And I really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Thank you for coming, everyone. And I do thank you so much, Raina. I appreciate that. And do you know, in the beginning, I asked everybody to brag on them on themselves a little bit, but everybody bragged on you. The whole thing, all the way down. You're so wonderful. And now we know why. And you won the gift today because, you know, what our original group was called, instead of like now we're Inspire Women's Mentoring Group, but it was High Hills and High Places. And you're taking, and yours was stepping forward, you know, uh, together as one, but you're taking, I always said one high heel, put one in front of the other and just keep moving right on up to the top of your profession. And Absolutely. that's what you're encouraging these people to do. And we always want to just take 30 minutes to, you know, give you a little insight on how to get to the top. And you've done a fantastic job today. Would you email me your address and and you will be getting one of these little pins high heels absolutely and I, love I, I, love, I love my heels I'm not gonna lie I'm almost six foot but I still wear my heels and I will never forget the day that Mike walked up to me at the counter in the office and he looks up and goes are you have you always been that tall yes I've always been this tall I just have <laughs> that's yeah, fun I, I'm super excited about that thank you well, we're so excited. We had so many people on the on the call today and we really appreciate it. And thank you so much. And we will be putting this on the uh, website again. It's going to be www.inspiredwmg.com. And any you can go there anytime and see any of the other, you know, uh, people that have inspired us through the year. And thank you so much. And Laura, you want any last words? No, amazing job so timely i think you know in the holiday season and the rushing around and everything else that we're overwhelmed whether it's business or personal i think the conversation of your perspective is something we all needed to hear and sharing your beautiful family with us and your and your very inspiring story with jay i think all of us are leaving here with our hearts and our minds full and and prepared and ready so thank you so much for sharing you're all amazing again happy holidays and just a little tidbit that in january please join us again where we will have the speaker irene duford where she will be speaking about increasing your pipeline in a warm effective way thank you everyone exactly and any of you, you can sign up for our meeting every month thank you Merry take care Christmas. everyone Bye. Merry Christmas.